Good yeah. <laughs> Namaste, Adam. Namaste, Tom. So, uh, how'd you enjoy yoga this morning? It, it was great. It's a little hot here on the beach, but uh, uh, they're still uh, just cooling down a little bit. Uh, so I thought I would pop in and, and see how see how your yoga session was. Oh, I think I was set up. <clears throat> Had a conversation with Todd Brown this week, and uh, he told me, uh, you know, to make sure when I went to yoga this morning, I should uh, I should bring the props that they said. And he's like, make sure you bring the goat. It's goat yoga. Oh, so. Well, that makes sense. I, got, I went out and got a goat because obviously we, I'm pretty rural here. So I was able to find a goat, brought it in, didn't get along with the dogs at all. <laughs> doing my stuff, doing the yoga poses, doing pretty well. Consider myself master yogi now. And uh, started getting a little bit mixed up. Was was Navasana when I should have savasana and was upward dog when I should have been downward dog. And then the goat jumped on me, knocked me over, and I think I hurt my shoulder. So I think uh, I'm done with yoga. But either way, it was a great session. She did a wonderful job. A lot of people on the on the, <clears throat> the the telecast this morning, so namaste. Namaste. So not overly zen for you then. Not very zen. However, I do feel the yogi energy. Excellent. Excellent. Well, as you can all see, we started our day with some sunrise yoga. Um, thank you to the support from the Florida Cardiovascular Pulmonary Rehab Association, and it's a perfect way to end our virtual annual meeting. There's a lot more to learn today, but before we dive in, Adam, what were your thoughts yesterday? And as you do that, I'm gonna run inside. They're still, like I said, finishing up here. I'm gonna run inside. I got a nice little studio set up um, at the resort here. So go ahead and tell me what your thoughts were on yesterday. Yeah, I had a great session, yes, or had a great time yesterday. The sessions were out, outstanding. Uh, the started with those rapid roundtable discussions. So many great topics to choose from. Um, I was able to sit in on a few enjoyed them very much and the, the participation was amazing so um for for moving to a new type of uh offering i think it transitioned very well and those those blended well it's a great discussion um the award presentations i think some of the best we've had um it's great to see everybody um who have won awards and being rightly recognized for all the hard work that they've done uh congratulations again to ross arena barry make and of course bonnie sanders and as well as all the rest of the, the winners. <clears throat> um, also uh, enjoyed uh, the timing of enrollment presentation by uh, led by Quinn Pack and Stephen Kate and I uh, thought they had great information for both cardiac and pulmonary rehab programs and uh, really allows us to, to really think about when we're getting our patients in. And then finally, no doubt the, the trivia game last night, a little bitter on the ending. I think we got uh, I think we got housed a little bit on that decision, but whatever. I'm a, I'm a good sport about it, but <clears throat> we're the real winners. So anyway, very very fun time, and uh, glad us, so many people were able to enjoy it for sure. How about you? Yeah, no, it was a wonderful day. Um, you know, just going back to the awards, as you said, I mean, it was just powerful. I think what was most powerful for me was to hear sort of the family tributes and you know really how much. Um, our awardees, uh, their families felt about them and all the work that they had done. And, and, and I didn't know, I thought this was a very fascinating fact that Ross, Ross Arena is the most published physical therapist in history. I did not know that. And I can see it, but I did not know that. Um, so the awards were awesome. I went to um, Janelle Slank's talk on Outside the Box for value-based um, care for small programs. So she's in Northern Michigan and really talked about how you utilize that stuff in you know, she I submitted that session, obviously pre-COVID, and then really pivoted her talk to, to what she's doing with COVID. So I thought it was a really, really good um, uh, session. Um, then I went to Dean's talk, and we're going to talk to Dean here in a little bit, um, his rapid player session on Move the Tube, uh, which I, was a fascinating way to look at how um, you actually uh, can can work with patients post-cardiac bypass surgery, post-sternum uh, 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 um, um, in external uh, incision, excuse me. Um, and then finally, of course, the trivia night. I would agree with you, Adam. I think you um, did get a little bit hosed at the end there. Um, my team was in second place, uh, actually third place, because there were two ties. Your team lost. I think you should actually demand a recount, and maybe we should take yep. this to the courts and uh, you know play it out over the next couple of months. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think the Supreme Court's got much going on, so I think we could probably take it all the way there if we needed to. All right, definitely yeah. worth it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so no, um, it was it was a wonderful day. Really, really. Yeah, um, I agree. Looking forward to, to it today. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing off strong. And uh, I know we've got a great lineup for today's uh, common uh, Adam morning show. And we're going to start with uh, Adam. Uh, Adam. Barb. Um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, we're going to interrupt you for a second here. Um, uh, Jared and I were digging out of the 2020 Wisconsin soda blizzard yesterday. <laughs> we thought it may be nice for everyone to learn a bit more about our lovely hosts and the roles that you two play as co-chairs of the program committee. So we're gonna interview, we're gonna interview both of you today. Awesome. That's scary. Sounds fun. Let's get to right. it. Well, don't worry, don't worry. Um, we didn't <laughs> use any of Todd Brown's comments or questions, so y'all are safe, but- That's hey, good. Tom, Tom yes. as you can see, I'm reporting live today from Main Street, USA. Love it. Uh, which I believe might be your favorite place on earth. That it is. A Walt Disney World theme park. Yep. I bet most of our audience does not know that about you. I bet Jess does, because I think she has a uh, uh, some type of audio of you cackling somewhere in some type of ride. But um, I, have, I have two questions for you, actually. So it's a two-part question. The yes, first question is, how many theme parks have you been to? And then secondly, which I think is a much more interesting question, is if you had a chance to be a Disney princess for Halloween, which princess would it be and why? Uh, both very easy questions. I have yep. been to obviously Disney World in all four parks multiple times. Went to Disneyland uh, for the second time. First time was the Anaheim meeting. Uh, I took the family finally. They got to hear my cackle on Space Mountain, which is <laughs> what you're referring to uh, last fall. And I've been to Shanghai Disney um, out in China, uh, which is an amazing, amazing park. This was prior to uh, the coronavirus, I just want to point that out. Um, so, uh, been to all, uh, all of them in the U.S. Plan is, uh, in the next couple of years to get to Japan, Hong Kong, and Paris. So, um, and I've been to the Disney cool. Resort in Hawaii. So, Disney is a love. Uh, Princess would be easy question or easy answer. That would be Belle. Um, Belle, probably because of the love that my daughter has for that princess. And the way that she loves to read and, and, and just that, that is her favorite princess. So that'd be mine. And I think I'll look good in yellow. Great. <laughs> right. Now, Adam, <laughs> well, many people may not know that you're a real bourbon connoisseur. So I'm yes. going to your favorite places this morning, a bourbon distillery. I had to ask them to open it early for me. Very now, jealous. Out here. Uh, last year in Portland, if you recall, we came across a rare bourbon that was four hundred and twenty dollars per pour, yep. and I think we—I believe we did have you convinced to buy a glass of that, but then they wouldn't accept your spare roll of AACVPR tickets for payment. So, we were... <laughs> yeah, it was unfortunate. That was very unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. So, Adam, what is your favorite mm. bourbon? Oh, my favorite bourbon by far is Blanton's. Um, very easy, very good to drink. Um, you know, it's not too far of a trip from here. I can't, the unfortunate thing is you cannot find it anywhere in the Carolinas. So um, it does take some, um, some maneuvering to find it. But um, if I can't have that, then I'll go with some Buffalo Trace. And again, that's very difficult to find down here as well. But two of my favorites, very good to go. And I'm very jealous of your, your location, by the way. <laughs> He's sipping, cheers to you. Hey, Adam, <laughs> yes. um, we hear a lot about you being Tom's sidekick. And <laughs> I once, I once heard that you shared an office with Tom and Tom had a real desk and you got the kid sized desk ne next to the wall. Has, has he always been that generous to you? Oh, a hundred percent generous. Um, you know, it, it was great, you know, for the, the short time we were able to work together, he made very good accommodations. So anytime I came to visit him in his office, I had my own little space, you know, those little kid desks where they flip up and then <laughs> come back down. That's exactly what it was. Um, he made me paint it and redo the top wood part, but uh, other than that, it was great. It was a great accommodation. Well, he kept on drawing, like like doodling on. It. I'm like, Adam, yeah. you can't doodle on your desk. <laughs> well, it was the gum underneath that was the problem too. So, yeah. All right. nothing but the best. Right? Get into your uh, your roles as the program planning committee co-chair. So, when pivoting to this virtual event, what were some of the greatest challenges and considerations you had as you redesign the amazing conference experience, but online? Yeah, great question. Really what, what we wanted to do um, was look at how we can not have a full day of people being on Zoom 
you know, from sun up to sun down, um, because we all know in our work setting, we'd get distracted and all this stuff. So we're trying to limit the daily sessions, but still get all the content in it. And frankly, we were able to get most of what we were planning in the, um, uh, uh, on, in the in-person conference into the virtual platform. And we, what wasn't going to be in the sort of quote unquote live virtual sessions, which we're in now is in on demand. So everything that was being planned for the in-person conference is available to our membership. And actually even in a better way, because um, all the sessions, you know, we can only go to one session at a time now, starting next week, all that is going to be available. Um, so you can go back and listen to any one of the sessions, including on-demand sessions that weren't available during these last three days. Yeah, and, and I completely agree with that. And the other thing that uh, we really were trying to focus on is, is how to keep that networking and relationship building opportunity that you get at the national meeting as an in-person event to um, to be able to do that virtually. And, and so we really were, were trying to focus on opportunities to stay connected and uh, have ways to communicate. And I think the chat boxes has, has helped. And I think the trivia event last night has helped and yoga this morning. Um, all of those things have really um, helped people stay connected. I don't think it's been as perfect as in person, but it also has, has, has taught us that there are ways to still feel connected even when you're not together. So it's been great. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. I agree. Hey, when planning the education for the annual meeting, what were the major themes and topics that the committee had prioritized? Yeah, um, you know, new patient populations was something that rose to the top pretty quick um, when the um, committee was bringing forward sessions. And I think you've seen a lot of that throughout the conference. Uh, certainly home-based care, um, hybrid-based uh, uh, programs were also um, very, very high on the radar. Um, and then still, you know, there's a lot of um, – uh, conversations and we had numerous sessions on value-based care. I mean, it, it's still an, an incredibly important topic. Four years from when we launched it, it was fall 2016, for those of you who were there, were on the trivia night last night. Um, it, it is still relevant, but it's relevant even more because of where we are with COVID and the programs trying to reopen and trying to get back. Um, so those were really the topics. And as usual, our program planning committee uh, just brought forth relevant topics and really, really good sessions. Yeah, and I think on top of that, we really looked at how, how do we incorporate an innovation and, and really trying to focus on program innovation, both in normal times as well as what happens during these COVID times and how do you react to a re-entry situation or how can you get people in sooner? Or how, how do you manage um, different populations that may be coming into cardiac rehab now and even children? Um, how are we, uh, how are we rehabbing our pediatric population? So lots of ideas and innovation and, and lots of, uh, different programmatic ideas that we're being able to, were able to be shared, uh, during the course of this week. And there's a few more today and looking forward to seeing those, but definitely wanted to keep that innovation topic, uh, front of mind. Great. So Tim, what was one thing that you did miss about not being there in person? Without questions, people, without question. It is being able to connect um, with with all of my friends and colleagues that I've been with with so many years. Uh, we just have so much fun, and, and, and frankly, the main reason why I've stayed involved in this organization for so many so many years one because of what we do as an organization, but two, it's because of the people. I was really hoping you're going to say singing karaoke like at last year's uh, networking event. So Barb, cue the video. All right. Oh. Yeah. oh. Nah, I think <laughs> ACVPR ball. Dang it. <laughs> but we do have it, Tommy. We do have it. I, there's many videos of it out there. So give right. me a little Billy Joel, give me a little sticks, and, <laughs> and, we have a lot. Two and, and I'm all over it. So <laughs> reflecting on this week and, and your term as the planning committee, what are you guys most proud of? For me, it's two things. One is, is our speakers. Um, you know, what, what they brought forth in their, in their sessions have been absolutely amazing. And like we, we talked about, it's many of them have sort of pivoted what they were talking to, to what is um, relevant in this post, post COVID era. Those are wonderful pictures, by the way, um, <laughs> except for the Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, Jersey Bar. Um, uh, but number two is what our program planning committee did. Uh, we had a fantastic in, in person meeting. Um, back in uh, February in Chicago before the world shut down. 
and planned it just a phenomenal in-person meeting, but then to pivot on direction by the board, and thank you for the board for acting swiftly on that, but pivoting to this virtual platform, every program committee sub chair um, stepped up, rallied around, and just brought, brought forth some of the best content and, and just move things forward. So, you know, those are the two things that I'm that I'm most proud of. And, and you know, when we're done here, I, I, I will thank, um, uh, in particular, our AACPR staff, who has been absolutely tremendous throughout this. Yeah, I, I would second that and, and really can't add too much more because, quite honestly, the work that went in on the front side before the pandemic hit, um, we were expecting just a fantastic meeting and to be able to provide um, the same type of meeting in a different format through the foresight of the board and AACVPR team, um, and as well as the program planning committee. I couldn't be happier with how all this is turning out, and, and as well as to all the, the attendees. I mean, that takes flexibility on their part in, in, in trying to maneuver a new way of having a conference, and I think um, what we found is some things that we can utilize again in the future, um, regardless if we're in person or not, and uh, I think this has set us up for a whole bunch of opportunities uh, down the line. And, and I'll be more than happy to say that uh, looking forward to maybe even continuing this morning show in the future. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I do, I do have ears, but they seem to like go in and out. And I just figured we'll just leave the ears down. But. It's like a beanie. Yeah, well, like I'm missing the helicopter piece that you said I should have. So <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just duck out here for a second. Um, because go ahead, Aaron. Now you can uh, you can cue those photos. Because um, here comes the mushy part. So as my partner in crime and roving reporter compadre Jared often says, I may just get red eye right now. So <laughs> in all sincerity, these two guys are rock stars. Tom and I were newbies on the board of directors in 2007, and of course, y'all should know this. Once you meet Tom, yep, you guessed it. You're going to meet Adam too. <laughs> we quickly became friends and I had the privilege to serve on the board of directors and the executive team with the both of them. Their dedication to this organization and to our patients is palpable. We've worked together, we've laughed together, and sometimes we've even cried together. We have heard it a lot this morning on this morning show and I'm going to say it again. AACVPR is an amazing organization, and it is the people that make it such. So gentlemen, program planning co-chairs, the morning show co-hosts, co and my dear friends, we take our ears off to you. <laughs> well done, and we love you. So, Thank Barb, you, Barb. Barb, you are wonderful. Um, not only a um, fantastic friend, um, a fantastic leader of this organization and, and you know, many organizations. Um, you're a mentor. Um, we've watched your, your leadership and I know Adam can speak to you. He's, he, he served with you and you guys changed the culture of the board. Um, and I'm just incredibly grateful to, to uh, know you and, and be able to pick up the phone anytime and call your friend. Yep, and that right there is why I missed the in-person part, Barb. Um, you know, it's great to be able to see faces and, and talk to people, but the the hugs and you know, the the camaraderie that we can we can't share being this far apart is 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 the hardest part about this meeting. But thank you so much for those kind words. Um, yes, Tom and I seem to be connected at the hip most times, but in retrospect, um, everything that he was able to teach me, along with the rest of the board members and all of those fabulous leaders that I've met, including yourself, uh, has really gone a long way to, uh, to keeping me involved in this organization. So thank you very much. It's a lot of fun. We can do stuff with your best friends. And definitely. I can definitely say that is without question. So um, Barb, Jared, thank you for your support um, throughout this week for sponsoring the morning show and for being here every day and just having fun with us. Uh, we've really, Really enjoyed it and, and you know, looking forward to future events together. Definitely, thank you very much. All right, pivoting from that uh, insightful and very close to the heart conversation. Uh, today at 1.25 uh, p.m. Central Time, AACVPR's President Anna Mola will virtually pass the gavel to incoming President Dean Deersing. Here now to speak about the state of our association and its future, please welcome both Anna and Dean.
Hey guys, how are you? Hey. Good morning, everyone. Well, so Anna, uh, surely this has not been the presidential year that you were planning. Um, it's uh, changed a little bit uh, from what uh, you probably expected last fall. COVID-19 certainly threw you many curveballs, but you've been working incredibly hard um, and a lot of things have happened. What are you most proud of this year? Well, I first want to state that I am just so overclent from the previous conversation of uh, heartfelt um, words um, that uh, you all expressed. And, and, I, and I think that really has come through um, reacting to this whole COVID-19. Uh, the first of all, I'm, I'm honored and humbled to have gone through this year with some amazing uh, individuals um, that had a shared unity uh, that this was going to be our finest hour in the middle of the chaos. Um, unity of all of us from members, from um, AACBPR leaders and staff from our, you know, our national uh, subject matter experts, uh, clinicians and researchers, our GRQ, uh, our partners with AHA, ACC, uh, the Million Hearts Cardiac Rehab Collab Collaborative. We all really united um, to really fight for uh, our patients and, and, our, and our members within each respective uh, association. Um, I think the uh, call to action in terms of establishing the COVID um, task force um, was very, very pivotal. Um, they led us to really then garner some resources, review uh, the data, the scientific facts, and uh, place them on our COVID-19 um, resource platform. Um, hopefully that was helpful to all. Uh, regard, regardless of uh, their role uh, in the association and also in their programs. I think the reopening guidelines hopefully was helpful to our members as well. So I think um, those were the real critical core, core interventions that helped us get through the last nine months and continue to get us through uh, the next uh, succeeding months. That's great. Absolutely. Dean, can you give us a peek at the strategic plan initiatives AACVPR can expect to see implemented over the next year? Sure. Um, I think one of the things that we probably all recognize on, on the Zoom and, and in this meeting is that COVID's not going away anytime soon. Um, and so we'll continue to, to help support our members and our programs through these times. But one of the things that I, I, I'm really excited about is focusing strategically as much as we can on the healthy side of business. And so um, things that, that, that we'll be focusing on in our new strategic plan, um, our membership and engagement and growth, program quality and sustainability, and science and outcomes. Those three pillars are our pillars um, for this new strategic plan that runs through 2022. Um, I'm not gonna share all those details. Um, you, can, you can hear some of those details in my president's message this afternoon. Uh, but really excited about what we have forward to look for, or we're able to look forward to, um, as well as continue to support people in COVID. Great. Yeah, thank you both Anna and Dean. Uh, Anna, your leadership throughout this has been tremendous. Um, we, we appreciate that. Um, beyond, um, you know, it's going to be a legacy because of what you had to deal with throughout this year. So thank you for that. <laughs> And Dean, just incredibly excited uh, for you to come on board as, as president, worked with you for many years, um, and just think you're an awesome leader and, and will be great in the presidential role. You'll hear from both of them a little bit more um, later on today. Definitely. So everyone, today is the last day of our event, unfortunately. It's been a very fast couple days. Um, if you've been collecting words to unlock the passport to prizes winning phrase, submit your guess in the survey by the end of the day today. Unfortunately, you don't get the Tom and Adam show um, in the vendor uh, hall, but we'll make do this year and uh, try to figure out a way to do that again next year. Remember that recordings and handouts will be available for the on-demand viewing in Pathable until December 31st. Claim your CEUs for watching either the live session this week or the recordings on your own time. You'll receive our certificate via email this, via email this evening for your sessions you've attended this week. 
on-demand session viewing will be uh, will begin on Monday, October 5th. Um, so before I uh, depart as our last morning show, I just wanted to say thank you to the AACVP, AACVPR board, uh, the AACVPR team, as well as the program planning committee who's done such a wonderful job uh, revising and reconfiguring this uh, program to, to meet the needs of the current, um, current environment. Um, thank you to Tom for your leadership. Uh, we definitely could have not gotten to this point without you. And uh, looking forward to finishing off the day strong, uh, exchanging leadership and uh, congratulating Anna again on a fantastic job she's done leading us through this uh, challenging time and looking forward to Dean's leadership in the future. Um, again, thank you to all for who have attended. Um, hopefully you found this meeting very valuable and we appreciate your support of both the meeting and AACVPR. Absolutely, and, and first off, thank you, Adam, for your, for your partnership. Um, even though we're not at big desks and small desks any, any, anymore, uh, this has made me feel um, still like we're um, right next, next door to one another, working with one another. So miss working with you every day, but um, this has been a lot of fun, and, and certainly we'll have more of these experiences, but couldn't have done it without your partnership. Um, I, too, want to thank the board. Um, for their leadership, um, but really want to thank our program planning committee, um, all of our subcommittee chairs that just have done a great job bringing the content forward, as I've said, um, and their their leadership has just been tremendous. Uh, but finally, our AACDPR staff, who, who many of you have, I think, gotten to interact with them maybe a little bit more because they're helping launch sessions and, and uh, maybe see their faces every now and then. But Hannah, Metzli, Molly, Jessica, Erin, Tio, Toya, Anna, and many more who have been um, such great leaders, great ambassadors for our organization, um, and just fantastic friends. And then lastly, um, I think we'll hear more about this later, um, one of our best friends, uh, Megan Cohen, who's been the executive director of AACPR for many years, um, is actually um, moving on to be an executive director of another organization. That, it's actually like an organization that runs VRBOs, so I'm gonna stay very close to her so we can, once we can travel sure. more. Um, <laughs> but Megan is not only just a fantastic personal friend, uh, but she has been a instrument, in, instrumental leader of AACDPR um, and really has driven our strategy over the past several years. Like it's been six, seven years, uh, no, eight, years, I believe, since she's been in that role. Um, and just a wonderful person, wonderful leader for the staff, um, and we just appreciate her partnership. So that's what I want our, our parting thoughts to be. I want to thank everyone who has come to this conference in record numbers. Um, thank you for your, your time in this sort of very strange world that we're living in. Uh, appreciate everything that you do for our patients, and enjoy the last day, and we'll be talking very soon. Thanks. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>